This is a short introduction video to Generator for Figma. Uh, Generator is a node-based plugin that lets you build complex geometry automatically um, by creating node graphs, which then do the work for you. It also allows you to experiment with the results by changing some values and having the results be regenerated for you without having to do any extra work. Uh, in many ways, it's like geometry nodes for Blender, but for Figma. So this is the default graph you see when you first start Generator. It's found in the help and subscription tutorials under the loops section. It's called targets. Uh, there are a lot of other examples and tutorials that you can look at to see what Generator can do and, and how to do it. Uh, so in this case, you get a grid of five by five randomized circles. And if I want, as an example, let's say a grid of five by 10 randomized circles, then I go over here and change the last number to 10 and then Generator automatically adds the other five rows for me. If I don't like the way the colors are distributed, I can go over here and change the seed of the randomness and then get a completely new distribution of colors automatically again, uh, which is very convenient. So the cool thing about all of this is that the result is always editable Figma objects. So these are just regular ellipses, uh, which you can then select, copy, paste, using your other work very, very easily. It's, it's very convenient. Uh, there are a number of concepts I need to explain for Generator to be clear. It's not complicated at all. It's just there is a lot of it, so it can seem a bit overwhelming at first. But we'll go step by step, and it's quite easy. So the main thing to note is that Generator follows Figma's logic pretty exactly. It's, it's really like you know everything you're going to do. It's just you need to do it explicitly in this case. What I mean is that if in Figma you create a rectangle, for example, it has a fill, uh, or it can have multiple fills. It can also have a stroke, and then that stroke has a fill, or it can have multiple fills. And then that stroke itself or the fill can be complex, it can be a gradient, and then that gradient also has multiple fills. And so in Figma you have this implied nested hierarchy of properties that you work with. In Generator it's basically the same, but you have to do everything explicitly. So here's what I mean. If you want to create, for instance, an ellipse. So you make your ellipse node. There's the ellipse, right? And at first you see that it's, it's dotted. I call this a phantom stroke. Now, if you click on it, you'll see that there is an actual stroke, but then when you zoom, the thickness changes automatically. And, and I just keep it looking the same every time to let you know that this is a phantom stroke. You haven't actually added any styles or any properties to the object. To do that, you got to create a color or a fill node, but you can just create a color node for simplicity. And if you plug that into the style parameter of the ellipse, now it has a fill. And now if you go to this object, now it has a fill just like it would in Figma. Um, so this is a good place to explain how objects work in relation to your canvas, right? When you work with objects on the canvas, those objects belong to you, right? Because you made them. When you launch Generator and Generator starts adding objects to your canvas, those objects belong to Generator. And so when you close the plugin, they disappear, right? And when you reopen the plugin, they reappear again. This was the cleanest way I found to separate your objects from Generator's objects. Uh, and then you know what to expect. Um, creating nodes. There are several ways of creating nodes. One is to just go into the menu and click on, a, on an item. The node gets created in the center of the window. Another way to do this is to drag it out and place it where you need immediately. This is convenient. A third way to do it is by pressing control slash or P or command slash or P and just typing the name. So let's say I want a, an ellipse. There's my ellipse. I press enter and it appears right under the mouse pointer so I can start dragging it directly. The way you copy nodes is very much like in Figma with objects. So I can either control C, control V or I can control D, which just duplicates it, or I can just alt drag and you get a copy immediately. The next thing to talk about is active nodes. So let me give this a color just so we see what we're talking about. And then I'm gonna copy and make a duplicate. And I'm gonna move this by changing the X parameter over. I think I can remove this by now. So in this case, you see two ellipses because both of these are active. And you know they're active because their headers are bright. If I double click on the background, they both disappear and the headers go dull. That means they're inactive now. The reason I do this is this lets you look at 
any point in the generation to see what it does for debugging purposes, etc. So if I double click on this, I see this. If I double click on this, I see the other one. If I shift double click, then I can see both of them. Uh, another way to do this is just select them, right click, and then you have activate right here. Uh, or you can deactivate all nodes from the menu or just by double clicking the background. So in this case, I'm just going to leave one. And let's talk a little bit about the node structure. So every node has a header and then it has parameters. I know some node-based software don't make that distinction. It's just one big node. In this case, I found it to be useful because every node has sort of the main data type. And then it also has parameters which can have any other data type. Uh, here, the data type is shape and it has the red color. The other data types available are number, which is blue, and text, which is yellow. You also have color, but color nodes take the color of the, take on their own color, basically. It's um, a lot more convenient this way, plus you have a swatch directly in your, in your uh, window to see what you're working with. There are exceptions to this, but we'll talk about them in another video. Uh, nodes pass data from all the outputs. So for example, if you were to copy, if you wanted to copy one of these numbers, you can just plug it into the number node, and there you go. Then whatever is in here goes to this one. Uh, but you can also copy the ellipse directly. So for instance, I can just connect it like this. I have the two ellipses here, you can see them, and they're identical. Another thing you see is that here, all the values are, the font is normal, right? And then you can change them. Here, the font is bold and italic. This is my way of showing that um, you can't touch them. They're read-only. And the reason they're read-only is because all of their data is coming through this wire. It's a copy, right? But what if you want to slightly modify the copy? So let's say I want the same ellipse, but I want it a little bit lower. Well, what you do is you create a number node, and then you can plug that number node into, for example, the Y uh, parameter of the copy. And then when you change this, it feeds into the copy, and then you have the same ellipse, just with a different Y coordinate. And if you now go in and change the width or something, it's still a copy. It's just in a different coordinate. If you want the same ellipse, uh, but at a different Y coordinate and let's say with a different height, then again, you can change the height over here. And then if you go back to the original and change the width, you're again changing the original and the copy, but the copy has some modified parameters. And the way you do that is by plugging in external inputs, right? Now, when I did this, so if I delete this, the copy goes back and all the values reinitialize to the copy's values or to the, the source's values. Uh, when I did this, so when, like when you first create a number of node, the default value is zero, right? And let's say you wanna move, change the X at this point. Um, well, if you plug it in directly, it's just gonna jump to zero because that's what this value is. But if you don't want that, what you can do is while dragging the cable, you can just hold control. And what you get is this backwards arrow. And what that does is it back initializes the value of this node to what you're plugging it into. So now, after having plugged it in, you haven't actually changed anything. And this value came over here. And now you can just modify it. You don't have to like find the original value again. And this is also very, very convenient. And I think that's kind of it for the basics. This, this is essentially all there is to generator. Now you take these little building blocks and you build larger graphs out of them to make more complex things. Uh, I guess one more thing is to talk about organizing your nodes. So you have the panels, which you can um, put, they always stay behind your nodes. And they're sort of, they, they, if, if you've ever used Blender, they don't work exactly like in Blender, but I mean, it's very similar. So if you just select the panel, and you start moving it around, you're moving only the panel, right? And this lets you, I mean, I may change this in the future, for now it's like this. If you double click the panel's header and you see that there's a slight color difference, I do that so that you can not see it if you don't want to, but you can also see it if you do want to. Um, if you double click it, then everything gets selected. So double clicking and moving, you have, it's like the, the nodes are now stuck to the panel. Um, Another thing you can do is you can colorize or highlight nodes. So if I right click on a node, uh, I go over to highlight, I can pick one of these colors and then this node gets an outline. I can outline this with a different color and this, uh, like this one with a, let's make it red, right? 
And that helps you find nodes easily from far away, especially this is useful in complex graphs. You can do the same thing with panels, but when you colorize a panel, the whole panel gets the color. Uh, renaming nodes, you can either right click and say rename, and then you can call it whatever you want. Uh, or you can just control double click. So double clicking is already reserved for activating the node, uh, but control double click lets you rename it. So, all right. And I think this is all there is to it. There's, I mean, there's just not much to generator besides these nodes. The detail is in combining them to make cool stuff. So I'll talk about that in the next video.